giving thanks. I can tell you, God has been good. God has been good to me. He has been good to us. Giving thanks. Giving the glory. Return the glory to him. What shall I render unto the Lord? That word render means what shall I return to the Lord for all his benefits towards me. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and everything within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction, from terminal conditions. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. So that your youth is renewed like eagles. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And everything within me, bless his holy name. Father, I thank you. So God does not expect us like the nine lepers when we are healed to just walk away from him without returning to give thanks. I have a cousin. When he was small, he used to be very self-centered. <laughs> he wouldn't give anything to any person. I don't know if he has changed now. <laughs> You give him a pack of biscuits, these packs of biscuits that will contain like five or six uh, pieces of biscuits, right? Uh? And then you give him, he opens it and starts eating it. You tell him, I'm very hungry, give me one. He will tell you that it's not sweet. <laughs> a small boy. He will tell you it's not sweet. <laughs> if he insists, he will tell you it's not sweet and he's eating it too. <laughs> Then when you see sees at some point, he will get upset. He will tell you that you have long throat. <laughs> I'm telling you. He tell you you have long throat. Every time you have long throat. You know, you gave it to him. Just give me a piece. God expects us to return to give thanks. We were in a forum on Monday. We were invited by Dr. Walosh. Oh, okay, he was doing some things about the university he founded. So we, we, we went there to enjoy in Sheraton with him. <laughs> now, but he said that, he says, and I want you to note what he said, one of the things he said, which I took note, I told mom, you see what you are saying. He said that 2023 will be fabulously glorious. But he said that he said, and I quote, in 2023, it's not a year you enter into casually. You see how God is leading us to enter into 2023. To me, that underlined everything we've done so far. I'm still preparing. I'm still in my preparation for 2023. Don't rest on your ears. We have to hit the road running. He said, it's not a year you enter into casually. He said, but it will be fabulously glorious. Okay? This is a day of thanksgiving. A day of thanksgiving. We sing the hymn. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. And that's true. We should be thankful. We should live a thankful life. Thanksgiving should be our lifestyle. The opposite of thankfulness is murmuring. <laughs> Spiritually, that's the opposite. Murmuring. I know it's ingratitude, but murmuring is the opposite of thankfulness. And don't tell me that God has not done great things. I know the pressure in this country, all over the earth, but in this country now. And I know what God is doing in this house. It's not, it's not the work of a man. The grace we enjoy here it's not what our economy is yielding to us. We are in a very hostile environment. And so for all God has done for us, the progress, the help, the healings, the sustenance in health, the provisions, the interventions... 
for everything he has done. We are coming together this day as a church, as a body, and as individuals and families to say, Father, we honor you this day for all you have done. We want to thank you. We are returning to give you thanks. Look at Psalm 92. Psalm 92. And so we should open our hearts and our treasures, our treasure houses, to give God glory. When those wise men, we say three wise men, they may not be three necessarily. They could have been two or four or five or any number. But why we say the three wise men is because they gave three gifts. But the Bible didn't say that they were three in number. When God led them to where Jesus was born, they went there, they saw Mary, they saw Joseph, they saw Jesus. The Bible says they worshipped Jesus. They didn't worship Mary. They selected who they would worship. They knew who to worship. They never worshipped Mary. They worshipped Jesus. And then they gave gifts to honor that presence. Gold and myrrh and frankincense. And they needed that gold because shortly after that, God was moving them into Egypt and they didn't have all the resources. They provided the resources for that move and stay in Egypt and back to Israel. When they moved into Egypt, waiting for the death of Herod, they didn't have a farmland to cultivate there. I believe the gold those people provided took care of that. The Bible says in the Old Testament, when we come before God, he said, none should come before me empty-handed. Come with a gift. Anybody that is telling you not to give to the things of God is not speaking by the Spirit of God. He's speaking by the Spirit of the devil. The Spirit of God will never tell you not to give to God. Never. He can't violate the word. Never. Each time you give by faith, you are attacking poverty and lack. And the devil doesn't want it. He wants the church to be reduced to the dust by discouraging every form of liberality. But the Bible says it's the liberal mind that shall be made fat. And he that waters shall be watered. He wants the church reduced to the level of poverty. We are now. The saying in the secular world is as poor as a church rat. Because there is nothing in the church for the rat to eat. But then the word ahaja and ahaja became synonymous with wealth. Is it true? And some believers won't agree to that. Somebody said, not in my watch. Like you mean, he said, not in my watch. Every religion encourages giving. Even the devil's camp, because they know you can't violate that law. It's a principle, eternal. Genesis 8, 28. Seed time and harvest, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, night and day shall never cease.
The same devil that will tell you never to give to the things of God will never tell you not to commit fornication. Never. Never. He will never tell you not to tell lies because he wants you to speak the same language as him. Never. Know who is speaking to you part time. It's good to return to give thanks. Are you here? Psalm 92. Jesus healed 10 lepers. Nine disappeared to their villages and various locations. When one saw that he was healed, he returned and fell before Jesus, thanking him and worshiping him. He returned to give thanks. Jesus turned to the, 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 the crowd that was around him. He said, well, well, there are not ten lepers that I healed. Why is it that none felt the need to return to give thanks except only this one and he's not even an Israelite? He's not a Jew. Except this stranger. Psalm 92. God commands us and be ye thankful. In everything, give thanks. Some of the year, you could have died any day of this year. Any of the days. Did you see the riot in Festac in the name of Okada and Keke? Especially Okada. They banned Okada in six local development areas in Lagos. And the more they ban them, the more they come to Festac. Each of those Okadas is a missile. It's a projectile. That you walk and come back every day is the grace of God. It's God keeping you. He said that you're keeping your going out and your coming in. Those things are missiles that are worse than bullets. There is death everywhere. There is lack in the land. But God has preserved us. I've not heard that any of our children fell out of school. It's the grace of God. It's his mercy. It's his mercy. Don't take it for granted. It's his mercy. I've seen big men fall. I've seen wealthy men come to nothing. But God has sustained us with bread, with the provisions of heaven. What can you give in exchange for the fact that you call on God and he answers you? You're in trouble, he intervenes. He speaks and you hear. What can you exchange for that? That you hear his voice, the voice of the creator of heaven and earth. And you know God spoke to me. What can you give in exchange for that? What can you give in exchange for that? If God gave any one of us deaf ears, spiritually deaf ears, we'll be groping in darkness and anything could happen. Men will ride on you in that state. They will, when the eyes are plucked off, the Philistines will play with something with, like with a toy. Mocking him and laughing. He became a jester overnight. But God has spared us all that. Man, let me tell you something you may not have thought of. I was telling one of the men some three weeks ago. You will notice in Oliver Bible Church, the men, they may not be the firstborn, they may not be the lastborn, but all the men are the pillars in their father's houses. Have you noticed it now that I'm saying it? All the men in Oliver Bible Church are the pillars in their households, father's houses. I'm not talking of in your family. Did you notice that? Who raised you like that? Who gave you that grace? Who gave you that recognition? Who empowered you that day, that way? Deuteronomy 8:18 8, says. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you power.
to make wealth. It's beyond wealth. He is the one that positions you in the place of honor. No matter what the men are doing here, you may not be the firstborn, but you are the pillar. The firstborns look up to you. Does somebody know what I'm talking about? How were you raised like that? What happened? Many people think I'm the first one in my father's house. I'm the fifth child of nine children. The third son. But I have a lot of responsibility. And when I talk, people listen. It's not because I'm, it's the hand of God. Men, do you see what I'm saying? Uh, virtually all you men are like that in your father's houses. It's God that raised you that way. Pillars. Builders of the family name. It's not a birthright issue. It's a grace issue and divine connection and covenant issue. Psalm 92. Psalm 92. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High. To declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night on an instrument of ten strings, on the, on the lute and on the harp. With harmonious sound, for you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the works of your hands. O oh Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. Hebrews 13, 15 says, by him, that's by Jesus Christ, Therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. A sacrifice is not something that is always convenient. Are you here? It's more of a sacrifice when it's not convenient to do it. But you will to do it. Because you want to honor God. By him, therefore... Let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. And he defines what the sacrifice of praise is. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. The fruit of our lips, your lips bearing fruit of words, honoring God and returning the glory to him. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Psalm 95. From a heart of gratitude. Our leaves should bear fruit. Thanking God. From verse 1. Oh come. Let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. They praised him with their leaves. They came with material offerings when this thing was written. It's the same order still. God is not only interested in our prayer requests. He's also interested in in our good things that return to him. They came from him in the first place. And so those 24 elders in heaven, the crown that God himself, the Lord Jesus, crowned them with for being overcomers on earth. When they worship God, they cast that crown down before his throne. All their triumph, all their victories, all their successes were embodied in that crown. They lay it before God and give him all the glory. God is not only interested in your prayer request, asking for a child. 
God, give me one child, Abraham. When that child was born, God was interested to see if you can offer that child to him, if you could offer him to him. He demanded for Isaac. Are you here? God is interested in your good things. He's interested in the portion of your income that belongs to him as tight. He's interested in your offerings. He shows where your heart is. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be. God showed me something on that scripture last night. I don't want to talk on that now. God is interested in your obedience. Stop arguing his word. You're not stronger than him. Stop deciding the way you worship him. Your name is not Ken. I'd rather be an Abel than be a Ken. You can't choose your way before God. A man's way is not in himself. Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 23, 10 or so. Oh Lord, I know that a man's way is not in himself. It's not for man that walks to choose his own way. But men in this generation are choosing their own way. They don't want to worship God in their terms. It doesn't happen. Never. It's God's way or no way. You can't worship God in your own terms. You can't serve him in your own terms. He is the boss. If you're willing and obedient, obedient to what? Instructions. Why is it tough obeying at times? Because the demand may be something you don't want to give up or do. You think it was easy for, for Abraham to wake up and carry Isaac to go and sacrifice him? For those of you that have seven children and five and ten and counting, if God asks you for one of those children, like he asked, I, I, Abraham had one. And God demanded for that one. You that have ten, if God asks you for one, can you give him? If your son comes back from school one day and says, God called me to preach the gospel, won't you start binding the devil? Say, quick devil is speaking to you. It's not God. Shut up. I rebuke that spirit. Which spirit do they rebuke? Holy Spirit, Abby. One man, one man, that one was an extreme case. One man and a vice admiral, we were working for him on a project in those days. We did a project and it was a good project. One day he called us, he knew we were Christians, myself and my partner, Reverend Sheguna. He called us, said that his son said he wants to drop out of school, that he wants to go and preach the gospel. He was in class three or so. He asked us, what do you people think? So, <laughs> we said we think he should finish his school and then uh, respond to the call of God. He said, I feel like flogging him. <laughs> said, I feel like flogging him. Psalm 100. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. His gates is like the first approach to his presence. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Worship him. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Psalm 66. Come before his presence 
with thanksgiving. Psalm 66. Let me read from verse 8. Oh, bless our God, ye, you peoples, and make the voice of his praise to be heard. Who keeps our soul among the living? He's the one that preserves us with life. Who keeps our soul among the living and does not allow our feet to be moved to sleep? For you, O oh God, have tested us. You have refined us as silver is refined. You brought us into the net. You laid affliction on our backs. Sometimes God allows those things to happen. You have caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but you brought us out to reach fulfillment, to a place of abundance. The King James says, to a wealthy place. I go into your house with burnt offerings. He's returning for all that deliverance to give thanks. I go into your house with burnt offerings. I pay you my vows. Quit my lips have uttered and my mouth has spoken when I was in trouble. When we are in trouble, I remember a man where well, this will be edited. I remember a man I saw in a dream that he was working in a certain institution. We make vows. When we are out of trouble, we forget the vows. He said, I will go back to verse 13. Go back to verse 13. Quickly, who is there? I will go into your house with burnt offerings. I will pay you my vows. Remember the vows you made. Quit my lips have uttered and my mouth has spoken when I was in trouble. Now that you're out of trouble, it's time to return and say, God, this is what I promised. There, whatever you promised at the end of the end, God has done his part. Be honorable. Do your part. Hannah was tormented for not having children for years. She was mocked. She was ridiculed. She went into the house of God, prayed, and God said, if you will give me a man child, in other words, a baby boy, say, I will return him to you and he will serve you all his days. God said, now you're talking. God needed a replacement for Eli. And she has struck the heart of God. So God granted her her request. Immediately the child stopped breastfeeding. There goes Hannah with that child and three changes of raiment or so. And with an offering went to Eli and submit the only one she had. Submitted that child. She returned to fulfill her vows. Many of us walk out on God when we enter into a deal with him. Once God fulfills his sense, say, hey, I didn't really mean it to. The, the Bible says you shouldn't utter that before and then. Get to Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 from verse 1. He said you shouldn't utter such a thing before an angel. He said walk prudently when you go to the house of God and draw near to here rather than to, than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they do not know that they do evil. The house of God is not a tattling house. When you come, be ready to listen. Verse 2. Do not be rash with your mouth and let not your heart utter anything hastily before God. For God is in heaven and you are on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. Verse 3. For a dream comes through much activity and a fool's voice is known by his many words. Ta, 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 that's how you know foolishness. Ta, 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 You're winning. <laughs> tell, tell your neighbor you're winning. <laughs> ta, 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 ta,
You know, here and for was Obi Arata ta 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 ta. You're winning. That. Verse four. When you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it, for He has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you have vowed. And God is reminding somebody. Remember, I will tell you something. Verse five. Better not to vow than to vow and not pay. Six, do not let your mouth cause your flesh to sin or say before the messenger of God that it was an error. The messenger of God is an angel. They hear you. They were witnesses to the convert. There are angels here. I have angels. Do not let your mouth cause your flesh to sin and nor say before the messenger of God that it was an error. Why should God be angry at your excuse and destroy the work of your hands? I think I'm talking to somebody. Let me tell you an experience I had. When I was in Trem headquarters in the early years of my ministry, I was doing all those. God hears every conversation of ours. Even when we are speaking to ourselves, he hears everything. They don't say before an angel it was a mistake. They don't let them begin to see us as a serious person. Look at the effect. He said, um, don't say before the angel of God that it was an error. Why should God be angry at your excuse and destroy the work of your hands? An unpaid vow can harm your work, your progress. Are you here? Be honorable. Be, honor be a man of honor, a man of your word. Even in spiritual things, that's where it matters most, even. But you should play out the physical things. We are here to give thanks today. We are here to, go, to tell God for all you have done. We are grateful. Go back to Psalm 66. Where did we stop? Psalm 66. The fan has helped me a lot. Verse 14. Verse 13. I will go into your house with burnt offerings. I will pay my vows. Quit my lips have uttered, and my mouth have, have spoken when I was in trouble. You know, it's like Jonah. You remember when he was trembling in the belly of the whale, he began to pray. <laughs> you read his prayer now. And when he prayed and prayed, he, he said those that of that lying vanity forsake their own mercy. Oh God, I remember when I was in Bible school, yes, I made this vow. I was breaking my vow. That's why I'm here. I'm here. Please have mercy. If you give me another chance, I will not fail you. And then God graciously for me sin. He, eh. he looks, say, so I'm free now. I beg, quit can't preach. Deliver. I know go. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? When you're in trouble, you tell God, do this for me. Do this for me. I will sing every morning for you, before you. I will dance before you every day. I will do this. I will do that. It's all. Pay your vows. Be a person of honor. Fulfill your role. Your part. God is faithful any day. Faithful and true. Faithful and true. I've seen his faithfulness. His faithfulness encourages me to keep going. What verse are we in now? I will offer you burnt offerings and sacrifices of fat animals with the sweet aroma of rams. I will offer booze with goats. Selah. Verse 20. Bless, blessed be God who has not turned away my prayer nor his mercy from me. God answer, has listened to our prayers. He answers us. He doesn't turn away our prayer. When we go, he answers us. He helps us. He responds. We need to honor him back. We need to give him thanks. Psalm 107. Two more openings. Psalm 107. Verses 1 to 3 first. Verses 1 to 3. And then we look at a group of four. One group out of four groups that were mentioned there who were in trouble and God saved them. Thanksgiving to God for his great works of deliverance. That's the title. Verse 1, oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give him thanks, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. 
Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered out of the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. Let the redeemed of the Lord declare it. I was sick, God healed me. I was lost, God saved me. I was hopeless, God gave me a sense of direction. He, he, he gathered my life together. I was a drug addict, he delivered me. I was a foolish drinker. God saved me and helped me. The person I am today is not the person I used to be. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let somebody hear your testimony. Let somebody hear the testimony of your life. Somebody is waiting to hear your testimony. Let the redeemed of the Lord declare it. Let people hear you. Paul never sees anywhere he went to tell the testimony of the kind of life he was living and how Jesus intercepted him and how he came to be where he was. Are you here? That Damascus road experience, he always, before kings and princes and common people, he always talked about it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say what God has done for them. It will help somebody to believe. Then somebody can argue your, the Bible, but they can't argue your results, the testimony of what you experienced. Jesus healed a blind man and the Jews were talking the man into saying that Jesus is, is a sinner. Well, at the end, they argued and argued. And that man is a sinner. He said, whether he was a sinner or not, oh, I don't know. One thing I know is that before I was blind, but now I see. I can't deny that one. Your testimony. Your testimony. What has the Lord done? Declare it. And gathered us from out of the lands, from the east and west, and, north, and from the north and from the south. Go to verse 17. Let's look at a group of people there, out of four. These people were foolish. These ones were fools because of their transgressions. Stupid living, excessive living, sinful life. They were fools because of their transgression. And because of their iniquities, lawlessness, they were afflicted. Their soul abhorred all manner of meat. They, in their affliction, in their sickness or whatever, they lost appetites. They came to the point of dying. And they drew near the gates of death. Some people go through that. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word. This translation does not capture the, the root Hebrew uh, language. What this verse says is, he sends his word and heals them and delivers them from their destructions. Is is still present. That's the way it is in the root. So let's read. He said, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men will give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful words to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifice of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. Rejoice before his presence, giving the glory. Give me Proverbs 3, 9 and 10 in the Amplified Bible. Proverbs 3, verses 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your crops' income. Why would somebody reject this and take Isaiah 50, 17, 54, 17? No weapon found against me shall prosper. They are all, both of them are Old Testament. Are you here? Eh? The, the selfish nature of man. What? In your man, I know why, eh? The self, selfishness is a terrible spirit to deal with. A selfish person is myopic. He doesn't see far. He doesn't see tomorrow. All he wants is that thing he wants now. He doesn't see the... He, do, he, does, he can't judge the impact, impact or impact of what he's doing now. What will happen the day after. That's the nature of selfishness. It's always short-sighted. He doesn't see tomorrow. Go to 
Go back to verse 9. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruit of all your crops, income. Tight is a kind of first fruit of your regular income. The top 10 is the Lord's. The first, that tight is just the foundation. It's the, best, it's, the, it's the starting point. It's not all. God owns the earth and the fullness thereof. He can take any man's wealth. In the New Testament, the, the, the church in Jerusalem wasn't giving tithe. They gave everything. They sold houses, gave everything. Sold lands, gave everything. Okay, please, if you don't believe in tithe, stop giving tithe. Sell your land, sell your properties, bring me the money. Obey, be a New Testament believer. Are you here? You must do one. Which, which one you there? Old or new? Which one now? Or both? Which one? You, you have to belong somewhere. You can't be a bat hanging in the air. Batify. Who wants a bat after this regime? Not be bat, bring coronavirus. Batify. And they are proud to say batify. Batify and become what? Nonsense. I don't know what's wrong with Nigerians. So if you know, come and tell me. God will help us. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruit of all your crops. Verse 10. That's your income. Then your barns shall be abundantly filled and your vats will overflow with wine. Consistency is the key. Some of us, the problem with some of us is when God made such a promise, all you're looking for is money. There are many things God can do without money. Money is part of the deal, but there are many things he does without money. He heals us without money at times. And that's what he wants to do. Honor is the key there. Honor. Honor God. Honor God. Come before I acknowledge. In giving thanks, you're acknowledging God. You did these things for me. You're the one. Are you here? Honor the Lord. Honor Jehovah with your substance. So we are here to offer before God. We've, this is our season of thanksgiving, but today we are summing up everything in one day and we are saying, God, thank you. If you want to make a special offering, those that want to make a special offering to the Lord, I make a call for that. And give you between now and the 12th of February to make good, to fulfill your thanksgiving. You can start in beat, but make sure by 12th of February you've done it. So by that time, the new year has kicked in already. And we are done with the January 1st. How should I offer willingly? As you propose, decide in your heart, what is God worth? Can I place a prize for what he has, on what he has done for me? Can I place a prize on the type of children he has given to me? Can I place a prize on the fact that these children are healthy and doing well? I see, I see, I see results for my effort. Can I place a price on the wisdom he gives me that helps me navigate through life? Can I place a price on his voice that I hear? Prophets charge some of us to speak to us lies. But God speaks to us without charges. You know how many of you have done? Some of you have paid prices to prophets. A man told me, not a member of this church, a man I know very well since I was born, He went to a prophet, he's having challenges. He went to a man of God somewhere in his city. And after meeting him, he paid 176000 to meet the man of God. He was telling me, he said, you see all these people that call themselves men of God. He said, all of them, are, I, 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 well, he started telling me two stories he told me. I told him, I told him that if somebody told me the first two of these sentences, they told me I would have located them, I would have walked away. Okay, this man of God, I'm telling you, you can't place a price on the fact that you hear God. That he wants to lead you by his spirit. Do you know what it means? 
Do you know what it means? Can you put a price on that? You were about to enter a bus to where? To where were you entering a bus to? At the Ido? To where? Abuja? Or where? Where? You where you want to go? Eh? He was, this man, this man, went to Ido when he landed, he was about to enter a bus heading to Abuja, and he had a voice that spoke to him, come down from that bus. Because God had a different plan. He came down not knowing what to do next. And God has led him. He would have... He would have disappeared in Abuja. <laughs> he would have disappeared in Abuja since. Can you give... So this prophet told him, he paid 176,000. The prophet told him a deacon in a Pentecostal church that he should take a foul and go to a certain roundabout in his city by 12 midnight and do whatever and kill that fowl there. And he did it. God's children. He did it. He was, he was telling me himself. It's not that Peter said that John said. Do you know what it means for somebody to be struck with a yoke of foolishness? You're just moving like mamumu. Others see, you, see that you're a fool. You're the only person that don't, they, will not know that you're a fool. Do you know there are people like that? You, everybody shows that this man is an idiot. Everybody sees you as an idiot, but you, you're speaking like a wise man. But everybody knows you're a fool. Do you know? Yoke of foolishness. I see it in people at times. Do you know what it means to be in that state? It's the wisdom of God that overrules that. And that's the wisdom. Can you put a price on it? Can you? We can buy the list of his blessings. Give willingly. Give cheerfully. God loves a cheerful giver. Give by faith. Be like Abraham. By faith, Abraham offered Isaac. By faith, Abel gave a more excellent offering than Ken. Give by faith. Give with a grateful heart or from a grateful heart. Give to honor God and give God quality offerings. Give him a quality offering. He warned them in Malachi. He told them, he said they should stop bringing the kind of offerings they bring before him. What is it? You know, you check your notes. The one that they rejected in the, the market, people re rejected. You give unto them. They go pay them to bank now. That's dishonor to God. Are you hearing me? The note went down rotten. Give your best bills to God. It's honor. It's, it's, it's the way you look at God. It's respect. Those that honor me, I will honor. Those that dishonor me, I will lightly esteem. It's honor. Honor God. The one where market women, even butchers reject. You know butchers, what they do to our currency. Now that one, you're him, you're back. nobody greet them. I go put them for offering, they go pay them for bank. You didn't honor God. So what they were doing sometimes, when in the days of Malachi, that God was rebuking them for, when they go through their flock, you know they were to bring up, they would look for the lame, lame goat, the one that is not, just the one they would dispose of. They would look for the blind and, and, and take it and that's what they, it, it was, the quality was not there. That mark of respect was not there. That mark of honor. And it's of the heart. It was not there. And God said, can you give this to your local government church? He said, can you give this to your governor? This offering you're bringing. How many of us we take a rough, rough money, uh, uh, useless money, and go and give it to a governor? Or local government chairman? Do you think God is a, a less personality than they? When you want to go before the local government chairman, you draw, or governor and advise you, you dress in a certain way. When you're coming before the Holy Presence, dress properly. Are you hearing me? Dress to honor him. Dress like somebody that is meeting a dignitary. And God is more dignified than any being. He's the creator. He's the strong creator. 
Elohim, the strong creator, the self-existent one. He doesn't need anybody to exist. So when you go before him, go with honor. Bring a willing offering. Purpose in your heart what you give. Give cheerfully, joyfully. Give by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Give with a grateful heart. Have you ever given somebody something just to get rid of that person? Uh, take, go. You see, some people can be very mean. A, dick, a woman that is supposed to be a deaconess in a church was telling me what she did one day. You know, she was driving somewhere and she, her particulars were not correct. She told me this thing several years ago. And these police people stopped her, police woman, and checked, and everything was wrong. I think even her license was expired. The police woman insisted on that she has to pay a price for it. Asked her for something. I don't know. I can't remember how much. Eventually, reluctantly, she brought it. She said, she, do you know what she told me? As she gave that, she said, she said she, she, as she gave the woman the money, she said, receive cancer. A Christian woman. On Sunday, she will take communion. She had just fired an arrow at that woman. And that money was a point of contact. A Christian woman. Some of you, when you want to talk, when you want to misbehave, when you want to maltreat others, you never remember on earth you're a child of God. Not to talk of a woman of standing in the, or woman of standing in the kingdom of God. Represent God in all you do. That's worship. Represent God in all that you do. That's worship. Your hands should heal, not deliver cancer. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Let's, let's, let's rise as we worship him. Once again, giving thanks. I want to hear your voice bearing fruit. Let's rise and give him thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Giving thanks.